So, hello. Hello, Andrea. It's so nice to see you. I did a class with, with you in PHS when I was first getting into it. And um, so I've known about you for a long time. And as I understand, you're one of the original uh, people in human design back when Ra was, was just bringing it. Just Yeah, back to the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, long time ago, very, very long time ago, and yeah. so many things have changed, and the community is really large now, and uh, it's globally accepted the human design system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's um, I'm excited. I, I there there are moments in my life where I just stop and feel so grateful that that I was on the fractal to to be introduced to this um yeah so we're delighted you are you are a headliner for us at the human design festival and um this is just a little video so people can get to know you a little bit and are you what are you excited about the festival well what i'm really excited about it's now seven years since we had our last large meeting in ibiza it was the 25th anniversary and um, you know we all celebrated the human design system and it was just you know um, a reminder to all of us uh, that we should continue because it was just one year after Ra had died mm -hmm. and uh, there was at one hand the sadness there and at the other hand uh, the feeling that yeah, we need to continue. But then I had the feeling it all break apart. Uh, then there was uh, some trials from, from Austria to do little retreats and little festivals. It never worked out. And then in a way I had the feeling that the community, as we have known it in Ibiza for years after years after years, um, yeah, didn't exist anymore. And it was so interesting for me uh, to get um, the request uh, via Facebook from Christo. Uh, at the first, I, I couldn't believe that what he was writing um, because I'm, I'm not really, fam really familiar with Facebook. I do a little bit here, a little bit there. But then um, I just read it a couple of times and said, yeah, that could be true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we had some conversations and then he has uh, sent me some nice photos and what he would like to do. And I said, wow, that's really great. And, you know, for me, it's in a way a revival of what we were used to have for years after years with Ra together, uh, that the community comes together, that we do a sharing, that we uh, empower ourselves um, and just have fun. I mean... <laughs> At the other hand, what I always experienced when I was in, in Ibiza is that um, everybody could live who they are and everybody had the chance um, to be truly authentic. And you know, there, there's, there was always a certain kind of frequency there. And yes, it was Ibiza at one hand. But at the other hand, there was this frequency there that yeah, people trying to get rid of their conditioning and trying to make correct decisions. And that creates in, in and of yourself and in your aura a different kind of frequency. And you get used to it. And sometimes we were months in Ibiza because there was a teacher's training there. And then you could really feel that's real and that's something that is really changing somebody's life. Yeah. And then it was always so sad for me to be back at the airport, sitting in the plane with the not self. Uh, and really that made me sad that uh, it was, uh, wow, we need to go back to normal life. And I guess that's the chance um, to have for newcomers, for those who have never experienced the excitement that we had uh, with Ra together teaching and having fun and um, having all the sharing and forming this strong community that was there. Uh, now we have another, let's call it a restart, a restart without Ra. Yeah. And I think the, the place is wonderful. And one thing why, why I'm really, really excited about is 
but Christo shared uh, that there are some wild horses there. Um, and that would be my first opportunity as I'm a horse, horse person since I was very, very little, uh, maybe to get the chance to see wild horses. That would be just mm. a, a super special add on to meeting the community and, and uh, yeah, supporting everybody. Yeah. I love that. Now that you say that, I remember you speaking about horses and how, yeah. how much they are part of your life. Um, yeah, I, I was in Ibiza for 2012 and that's, that's the only time I went to a human design festival and being with people, as you say, who are in the experiment and, and in that, in that vibrational field, it's, it's, it's a relief in so many ways and fun. And I think a lot of people have felt isolated in their experiment and, and it's a way to, you know, to even be awkward, you know, sometimes being in the experiment is awkward because you do something and then realize that you, your mind got in the way. And then, you know, to also be able to laugh about all of that. Yes. The humor is so important in experiments. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, you know, the, the mind, the awareness of the mind in human design is such a, such a big deal. And I have, I have learned to mostly laugh at my mind when it gets crazy and not all the time. Is, um, is there anything that you could say about how being in human design, especially for as long as you have, has changed your relationship with your mind? Oh, definitely. Um... You know, I was a scientist. Uh, I did my PhD at the time in the 90s when um, I met human design. And, you know, I was in, in the, yeah, in the top field of molecular genetics and I was at the best research institute in Austria. And, you know, everything was so mindy. But the problem that I had was, especially I have a, a open head and national center. So whenever I was at the institute, uh, and I was working, um, I mean, science was everything to me. Um, and then when I went to the stables to ride my horses, then I felt, why am I doing this? Doing all this, uh, this effort to just do my PhD. Uh, I could be a horse riding teacher. And then when I went to the mountains, um, climbing, people said yeah you're a fantastic climber why don't you want to be a mountain guide and of course it was easy to to be a mountain guide and and uh, uh, do all the trainings but then you know always when i came back in, in into the lab i said science that's it so at the end i was very very confused so uh i really thought sometimes that i would go nuts because you know, whenever I changed the places, I thought differently. And I thought I really had a serious problem. But then meeting human design, I just recognized that, well, you know, I have an open uh, mind. I have an open ashna and an open head center. And yeah, that's the way how to think and to let go. And yeah, that's totally changed the relationship uh, with my mind and really recognizing that I had a receptive mind and it works so differently so in the way that I was trained and uh, um, I always had the feeling that I was dumb and I always had the best grades at university but every time I did a, an exam I had the feeling I'm <laughs> I have the intelligence of a nutmeg you know uh, and this was such a relief. And moreover, of course, to let the mind do its job, um, doing my best when the mind is doing the job in teaching and in guiding others and not have the mind involved in, in my decisions anymore. And that feels such a relief. And yeah, I mean, this was really, with all the, the other stuff that I had, to learn about what is an open mind, what is a, a receptive mind, but not having the mind involved into decision making because the mind is always arguing. When we do one decision, it says yes, but. But then you do the other decision, then it says yes, but. And you know, it's, it can drive you crazy. But the moment of letting go of it and said, yeah, you have something reliable, that's your sacral and you're emotional and it takes some time. Wow. 
that's, I mean, that really changed my life. Yeah. I, I relate to everything you've said. I, I am also sacral and emotional with a right mind and understanding that was, was, it was just a revelation for me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I also am open head Ajna. So everything yeah. you said, I relate to very, very well. Yeah. And, um, I even got a few tears in my eyes as you were speaking because I, I resonated so much with what you're saying. And um, I have I have noticed how much I love my right mind now. Like now that I understand how I operate, it's this joy for me to just not have to strategic with things but to take them in and let that get called out and and my brain is certainly uh working better since embarking on my phs experiment too i've i've noticed Definitely, that of course yeah, yeah. Uh, i remember one time um in the class i did with you on phs yeah. you, you talked about how i think i remember this well um how you um you have a left brain yeah and then mm. you eat a lot of food and I was I was taken aback a little, and I have started eating a lot of food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just to, to nourish my brain instead of thinking I have to be always holding yeah. back. Um, and and so what I what I've noticed is how much easier it is to love myself with this. And have have you seen that in your own experience? Just self love. Yeah, I mean, the the trouble that I that I always had with me my personality and my life was that i always felt that i was okay but you know the rest of the world told me you're not okay um you should behave in this way you should behave in that way and i can al already the very first thing what i can remember is when my grandfather told me you know i was a wild girl you know i had skirts on and i always lifted my skirts and was running around like crazy <laughs> and my grandfather said you do not have to lift your skirt and uh, i didn't understand it you're a bad girl i said no i'm not i'm just enjoying life and this was the very first thing that i could remember and then uh, the teachers uh uh, the parents, uh, later on the partners are going to tell you what I need to do and how I need to behave. And I was not happy with that. And try, I tried it. And um, I could not love myself. Mm. Uh, it was not possible because uh, what I tried to love was a different person. Mm -hmm. And then human design came and uh, um, I knew who I am. Uh, I knew what was my life about and then i could really get the feeling for what i already felt about myself that was my true self and from the moment that i could really see that this true self that was never loved by somebody else um is the one that's really authentic mm -hmm. that was the reason and that was the moment where i could uh, start loving myself and honestly say, um, I don't care about the others anymore. And I have a lot of people now that do really love me the way how I am. Uh, they accept me how I am. And it's always a two way street. So I accept them as who they are. And they accept me and love me who I am. And that's, you know, changing the whole story. That's and then changing. you can look in, into your mirror and that's, that was something so astonishing for me, especially it was then really enhanced with my PHS experiment. You look in the mirror every day and then I said, what a wonderful girl this is. <laughs> and really seeing that, yeah, it's, it's fantastic how I look like. And, you know, uh, the way how my body is shaped and the way how I look, this is something that I could love every day when I look into the mirror. Of course, there are rare um, situations when I'm emotionally really deep, really deep down, like when my mother died. And of course, then I was looking in the mirror, I could see how sad I was. Yes, that was the moment where uh, it was hard to love myself. But in general, it's really something that, yeah, it could only happen with human design. You know, that, that last sentence 
about loving yourself and it could only happen with human design, I could only imagine that Ra would be so delighted to hear those words. You know, I've heard him say so many times that the biggest problem on the planet is people hate themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're always hating the wrong pe uh, person. They're, all, they're always they're hating who they are not. Yeah. Right. Um, if you could say something to Ra, if you were here, is there something that you would like to say? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, let's keep it short. Otherwise, we will sit here. <laughs> and the very first thing what I would like to say to Ra is um, thank you that you were here and did a great job. Um, then I would say, Ra, if you wouldn't be here, maybe I would not be alive anymore. Mm. Because, you know, when I was shifting from science to human design, I had cancer. And it was due to the fact that I, I knew human design that I survived. Um, then I would say to, to Ra is, um, I wish you would, he, would be here. I still have a lot of questions for you to ask. And I have found out a lot of stuff about PHS and race psychology that I would just like to discuss with you, whether I'm on the right track or not. And so many more things that I would like to say to him, but uh, just closing this statement is, um, I'm so happy that I was on your fractal and that we had these lovely conversations. And, the one conversation that we had is when I showed him my base base correlation in 2007. From that moment on, he changed the base theory and then the juxtaposition theory. Um, and I showed him, I said, you know, there should be two of the constructs. And I had, you know, it was just handwritten and uh, I showed it to him. And then he said, yeah, um, he wasn't interested in the first moment. Then he said, give it to me and then he was working on the new juxtaposition theory and then i he you know i was teaching and every time in the break he just um um said andrea do you have some time then he was explaining to me his new juxtaposition theory and then i could see his mind at work and that would be my last statement about ra and what i would say to him i said uh, i would say ra i've never met such a brilliant mind as you had and it was such a gift that I could see your mind at work because I guess it was very rare that he showed people how his mind really worked. And he honestly was a genius. I mean, the way how he developed the new juxtaposition theory just in front of me, this was mind blowing. And that was the great, a great gift to all what he has given to me in, according to human design. So, yeah, I wish you were here. Yeah. 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 But that's life. It sounds like you have made quite a contribution in so many ways to, to Ra's heritage and to what we now have um, that is so incredible. When... Um, in closing, would you like to say anything to the people who are considering coming to the program? Would you like to offer any support or encouragement or? Encouragement, yeah. I mean, whoever comes uh, should really be who they are yeah. and should uh, don't care about um, what other people think about them. Um, and even if the, it will be or seems to be quite weird for them or for others, they should really try to live their best who they are because you can't do that in the normal life. You can only do it when, you know, quote unquote, uh, crazy human design people are around. <laughs> and of course, when people come to me and ask me and have a response, I, I, I always support people. I always empower people. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to meet the community. Yeah, I am too. Thank you so much for your time, Andrea. And I'm, I'm thrilled that I'm coming and you're coming and we'll have some time to 
be in the field. Yeah, this is what I'm really looking forward to really have uh, the experience with human design people. Because, you know, when I'm teaching, uh, it's always nice to have my students around there, which are, of course, on their way, but it's just for a short time. Mm -hmm. But then you have a 24 seven in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will be just there for three days, but just within the three days, it's 24 hours that I will be surrounded by human design people. And that really will make the difference for all of us. For all of us. Thank you so much. You're welcome.